hello you guys we are back with the coffee days um uh series which has now become basically an lp because i love this series and it brought more drama than i was expecting like i was expecting like kind of like a friend's series you know inspired by like the friend show but no we got marcus flex up in here with a whole fiance on the side like got a got a toddler now with rosemary harris because her baby it done aged up um so this really ought to be called like the marcus flex lp it really should because you know he's bringing all the drama so let me update you on what has happened in game since we last played. So Marcus Flex, you know, Rosemary, he, we left off. He had that argument with, with Rosemary where she saw like that uh, Adeline coming out of his house. And he told Rosemary, like he was mad at Rosemary at first and like saddened. Like he had this this little like festering grudge with her like he was angry that she was like how dare you you know cheat on me like how dare you ask me to be your girlfriend up with a whole nother woman on the side living with you um so then where did we go from there um Adeline was like, who is this woman, Marcus? She just came up and stormed in my house. Like, I don't know her from Adam. Why is she up in my house? Um, and Marcus is like, oh, she's just a friend. She's just jealous of us. You know, nothing happened. And Adeline, Adeline believed him at first, right? So she believed him. So the next day, you know, she invites some of, you know, their friends. She invites Pob. Paolo, I guess his name is not Pablo. I, I've been saying his name wrong this whole series. Um, she invites him over and Jade and Eva, you know, some of Marcus's old roommates. And um, then, like, she walks out to the porch and she eyes him and she kind of hears Marcus say what really sounds like a pickup line because <laughs> it was a pickup line. So she comes out on the porch and she's like, really Marcus really and she's all angry so she huffs off and she doesn't really talk to him that day he doesn't really talk to her now she's got doubts about this upcoming wedding so and you know and then Marcus leaves with his friend friends and you know him and um Eva, Eva goes off you know to do her own thing you know she goes home whatever he goes with his friend um jade and he and jade hit up the coffee house you know and uh he starts getting flirty with jade now that he's got her away from all their other friend groups and then he's like i gotta go you know i'm gonna head off to the nightclub you know it's getting about that time and jade is like yeah they, yeah that's cool um, and they're only lovebirds, so they didn't get it, like, too hot and heavy. They didn't woohoo or nothing. Not that that makes the story any better. So then he goes to the nightclub, and he spots Eva, and he starts flirting up with Eva. Well, then eventually, <laughs> Jade shows up, but she don't see them flirting, right? She don't see him, like, putting the moves on Eva. Um, so he quickly decides, you know, he's like, hey, Eva, it's getting late. I should go home, you know, things like that. And mind you, Eva and Jade both know he's got a girlfriend. And there they were accepting his flirts and his his compliments. And they was just eating it up. So that shows how loyal they are to Adeline. Um, so Marcus then goes home and Adeline is furious. He was out all day. This is after she thought she, you know, caught him giving pickup lines like she's very upset so he just they just go to bed they're both angry they go to bed the next day is love day and Marcus goes and he gives her roses and he loves on her and he's like you know I love you I want us to work out you know it was just a compliment towards a friend I would never be unfaithful to her and you know she's he he does the dishes he's doing all them stuff and she's kind of she's feeling a little better like here's her man doing the dishes like she was just, you know, she was overreacting is what she's starting to think. So then Marcus uh, and her, Mark, but she's still a little unsure. And then Marcus is like, you know, hey, why don't we go to the community center? I have a surprise for you. And they have a wedding area there. And he up and he's like, let's get married now, you know. 
Uh, even though he's very non-committal, like he can't just commit to to one woman fully, um, as as we've clearly seen by his four relationship statuses. Um, and so <laughs> they get married, and Adeline is well forgiven her when they go home. They they get the moves on, they woohoo, and Adeline's all happy. Like she's finally got a husband. She finds out she's pregnant, and she ha she has the baby. Well, during this whole pregnancy, it really got Marcus thinking of baby Maggie that Rosemary was pregnant with, um, who is now a toddler. By the time like by the time their baby is born, like she's a toddler, and he decides to go up and visit Rosemary Harris, who this sim story is really all about until Marcus came storming up in here with his drama, um, uh. And, um, we're, we're gonna go and play with both of their families today. Um, so he has a baby, it's a boy, it's Matthew, but he's really curious about Maggie. And, like, you know, he, he swore to Adeline that, like, Maggie wasn't his daughter. But he knows he slept with Rosemary, right? He's just telling Adeline that so she'll, like, not panic. Because she heard Rosemary be like, you know, we had to have a whole baby together, Marcus. And she said, you know, she she he told her like she's trifling, she's this, she's that, like that ain't my baby, you know. Like he was telling her a whole bunch of stories, but he knows deep down that Maggie is his. So he actually goes and he visits Rosemary because he he kind of was curious about baby Maggie, you know, seeing his own baby Matthew in the crib there. You know, he just, he felt bad the way things left off. And truth is, maybe he was feeling a little something-something for Rosemary, especially with the stress of a new baby with Adeline. You know, that's stress. Um, that is stress on any relationship. And so him and Adeline, you know, they're a little stressed. And he feels like Adeline's, you know, a little, she, she's an overprotective. And, and, and he's nervous about things with a whole new baby. And this brings up his non-committal kind of trait. This makes him, like feel uh non-committal like he's like oh my goodness this baby is such a huge commitment so he's he's nervous and he and anyways he goes and visits rosemary's um because baby matthew brings up all this these feelings for him and he sees maggie outside playing and he starts talking to her and she gives him a hug and they're playing together and talking and Rosemary peeps her head out of the door and she sees this. Because, you know, she was like watching from the window, letting Maggie play outdoors a little. And uh, she peeps her head out and she doesn't want to interrupt. So she just kind of watches and then she heads back inside. Then Marcus knocks on her door and they start talking. He's like, you know, I know this is my daughter. You know, I love baby Mag. I Maggie is so sweet. Like, you've done such a great job with her. Like, I want to be there for her. I want to, like, support you guys. I want to be a part of Maggie's life. And he tells Rosemary this, this, and that, you guys. And then before you know it, they're flirting. You know, he's like, I want to co-parent. And then he's flirting, complimenting her. Like, you look good. You look so nice. You're such a good mother. And before you know it, they wind up in bed again. And so, and he, they still haven't officially broken up. Like, they argued that time, but it never got to the point they broke up because he laughed. And then Adeline laughed. So, like, it never got to the point where Rosemary broke up with him and she never, like, texted him. She just kind of ignored him after that and went about raising her daughter. Um, but clearly there's still some feelings there. And it, it's very interesting because Marcus, it said he feels like he's soulmates with um, Rosemary, which I found super interesting. And he feels like he's soulmates with his wife, Adeline. Um, and then Eva and Jade, I think they both said either love, they said lovebirds. Uh, they said lovebirds, and um, these two said soulmates. Like, originally, Rosemary said sweetheart, and, like, she was soulmate, and this was lovebird, and this was lovebird. But after he went and visited Rosemary, he really felt like Rosemary was his soulmate, not just, like, a sweetheart that he had a baby with from a one-night stand, you know. Um, so he's got this soulmate aspiration for both his baby mamas and, like, Jade and Eva are just lovebirds. Like, they they were just, he was just being an opportunist there. Like, he just was being flirty Marcus, um, which still doesn't make it better because, like, he should be focusing on his significant other. So, anyways, that's what's happened in the, in the sim days since the last part. And Matthew is such a cute 
cute baby. Um, Cor Cora Lee Garcia thinks Adeline Flex is swell and wants to come become best friends. Honey, I hardly know you. Uh, but sure, you want to be my friend, you just come and break into my home. Whatever, girl. You do you. Um, please leave, though. Now she's playing guitar. If she wakes up that baby, like, so help me. So help me. Because <laughs> I would so not be help happy whatsoever. Um, she's gonna be like, <laughs> ma'am, can you, like, my baby's in here. <laughs> I feel like that's what she would say. She would be like, ma'am, we need to have a deep conversation about why you just came up here and entered my establishment without any permission whatsoever. And you picked up that guitar and started playing it. Like, I'm feeling some sort of way about you right now. Apparently, we feel deeply connected, but I don't I don't really buy it. I think that's what this lady's feeling. I don't think that's what Adeline is feeling right now. Because let me tell you, if that was me, I'd be like, get out of my house. Get out of my establishment. And now they're just chatting. Like, this lady just up and entered your establishment without permission and you're just like yeah let's just chat with your baby a room away like Adeline come on show her that sass that we all know you have um but I've definitely noticed Adeline very much like every time Marcus explains something away she believes him like she is very much like stands by her man kind of kind of woman um like even though he's clearly all up here with everybody else. She thinks now that they're married, you know, their problems are gone away. Like, Marcus just love bombs it away. Marcus is something. He's something. He is drama. When uh, his his uh, friend group, when I read it, his roommate's description on EA. And I, I feel like I need to go read this with you guys because... I now have a better picture of their household, I feel like, and I know who's causing all the drama. Um, I know who it is, like, I can see it from a mile away. So the household that he was in before he had moved in with Adeline was in Windenburg. And it was this one here, the Partheus. And it said, drink, flirt, dance, repeat, Jade, Eva, Paolo jumped at the opportunity to explore the world and set up the ultimate crib in Windenburg as soon as Marcus extended the invite. And the party hasn't stopped since. Drama is never far behind when they're together. And they're always together with only one and a half jobs between the four of them. How in the world do they manage to pay their bills? And you know what? I feel like Marcus was the drama. Marcus and these two girls... Like, they probably be fighting over Mar both have crushes on Marcus, both be giving each other catty compliments, but pretending like they're besties. Like, I can see it. And Pablo, it, Paolo is over here in the background just taking this all in, who's like this, doesn't have a job, just like, whatever. <laughs> if they're fighting with each other, they're not fighting with me because I don't have rent money this month. Um, I do feel like Paolo may be a genuinely good guy. Like, he's, he probably likes to work on cars. He's probably just happy to be with his, was happy to be with his pal Marcus. Like, Marcus was his bestie. And I think he played a role in Adeline and Marcus, like, meeting each other. I really, really do because he was like, you know, she's so good. She's so cool. Like, that's my girl Adeline. Like, I've said that, I think, in another past episode um where I was like I think Paolo like played a part in them getting to know each other uh, but I think he should have gave her like a trigger warning like a warning like yo my dude can't commit to nobody um but he was probably thinking Adeline was the one who would change all that and I mean I guess they did get married because Adeline he wanted Adeline to like not be mad at him because even though he's not com non-committal Marcus he wants to be friends with everybody like he's he's definitely definitely that sort of guy so it would bug him if Adeline just didn't want anything to do with him anymore like it bugged him when Rosemary didn't want anything to do like he was he was generally mad at the fact that she insulted him now they're deeply connected again after his visit like that like warmed Rosemary's heart to feel see him play with Maggie a uh, little I, I don't think Rosemary knows though because like he lives in Willow Creek she lives in Newcrest. I don't think she knows or has heard the tea yet that he 
married Adeline because the last she knew, it, Adeline was just a woman living in his house. Like, she, she instantly had the feeling that was his girlfriend or that was something special to him, but she didn't know, like, what? Like, that was either his girlfriend, that was his fiance, who knows? But she definitely didn't know, you know, the full details. She just knew that they had some sort of relationship between the two. Like, this woman is living in his house. She knew he, it clearly wasn't a roommate. Um, but she definitely doesn't know they're married um, since the last part. Like, she has no clue about that. And she has no clue that they have now welcomed this baby boy um, who, who Adeline is so in love with her baby boy. Like, she is, she is so, so happy. She's making silly faces. And I feel like this series, it's not just about Marcus Flex. It really is about Rosemary growing up and making mistakes and, and things like that. And, like, the characters being young and building their lives, like, as young adults. Um... Like, Adeline now has a fear of a dead-end job and fear of unfulfilled dreams. Like, she just has this baby. Even though she loves this baby, she feels like, am I going to progress in my job while I'm a mother? How am I going to balance all of this? Um, am I going to, like... I mean, my life is going to be totally different. Am I going to be satisfied as a, a mother? And if I may not reach all these goals that I had for myself before that, like... And she likes to go partying, so she's probably, like... And, you know, the party life is is gone. Like, she's a mother now. It's it's not going to be there. Like, not to say she can't go out and enjoy herself for a night. But it's not going to be like it was before. Um, and Marcus, he has a fear of being cheated on. And let me tell you what, honey. This man has a whole fear of being cheated on. And has four, uh, three girlfriends and one wife. You cannot tell me that's not irony. I think he's... I think what it is, is he is afraid of being cheated on because he knows he is cheating on everyone he is with. Uh, he also has a fear of unfulfilled dreams, which I don't know, maybe he just feels like, you know, I don't know what his unfulfilled dreams are. I really don't. Um, I can understand why Rosemary might have unfulfilled dreams. Maybe his is the same way. Maybe he feels like he's not going to be this all-star athlete. His job is going to be dead end. He's not... You know, because he's got a, a wife now and he's got a baby and, like, the days of fun are over. Like, they're both experiencing a lot of strong feelings. He does want to talk over his relationship fears with Adeline. Um, so maybe let's go do that. Let's, he, because he feels like the one he is with is cheating on him. <laughs> Which I find so hilarious because Adeline's been faithful this whole time. Like, she cooks for her man you see her whipping it out in the kitchen right there. Like, she is she is a queen, this woman. Except for the fact that she consistently sticks by Marcus and believes his lies. She is a queen. Like, she cooks for him. She keeps, like, a spotless house. Like, she is, she is the girl. Like, he might join her with cooking. And then he might bring up his fears. Like, real casual-like. I'm still not sure who this woman is up in my house. We're just going to ignore her for the second. Uh, home invasion much? Like, Miss Coraline, whatever your name is. Like, I don't know why you're up in my house, Miss Coralie. Um, Marcus might take this. He's gone to bed. He's trying to avoid this conversation with Adeline. I don't think she'd react to it that well, to be honest. I really don't. And the reason I don't think she would is she knows she's been faithful. And she has questioned Marcus's fidelity in the past. So I think she might put two and two together. Like, why do you have these fears, Marcus? What have you been out there doing? Like, she's a smart lady. Um, how do I talk over his fears, though? He doesn't want to divorce her. Um... I don't even know where... Oh, talk about relationship fears. Yes, wake up. She's going to wake up to tend to the baby. That's what she's going to do. She's going to change this baby's dirty diaper. And then Marcus is going to come up here and be like, Yo, can I talk to you? Like, I have fears, Adeline. I have some real fears about who you've been out with. Like, who you've been out with. Are you like hooking up with Paolo because I you two are very close like I know you two are very close 
that's what Marcus is gonna do right now, which is, it is such irony considering, like, like, how are you accusing her of, discuss fears, yeah, let's discuss our fears, and let's do, I really want him to talk about his relationship fears, um, is, does he still have that fear? Yeah, he does. And it's almost Matthew's boyfriend. He he's talking about his fears. He's he is, he is. But he hasn't mentioned I think he's just talking about his fears of like unfulfilled dreams. And she's like, Honey, we're gonna build our dreams together, like we've got a family. Like I so appreciate you coming to me with these fears. Sorry, my cord is trapped around my shoe and and all of that and then he's he's really just waiting for that moment where he can be like look i think you're cheating i think i think you are cheating on me like i i feel it in my soul <laughs> he may be feeling something but i definitely ain't from adeline that is all i've got to say about that because we know Adeline's been faithful. Um, he might actually come up with a reason to, like, argue with her. Ooh, ooh. Oh, he could argue about parenting. Would he pick a fight, though? Let me know in the comments if you think Marcus would just pick a fight with Adeline. Be like, look, I think, like, you, you, hanging, you spending too much time with Paolo over here. Like, he knows Paolo is his bestie. Like, he knows Paolo is her bestie because she does have this, uh, that she's, like, good friends with Paolo. Like, they're deeply connected. So, I don't know. Marcus is really just, he, he needs, Marcus needs some time to really uh, figure out his, his feelings and his life and whether he even wants to be married. We're going to jump on over to Rosemary's household Cause I just want to show you baby Maggie because she is so cute as a toddler. I mean, she's not like a baby baby anymore, but, you know, she's adorable. Like, look at that. Look at that little, little, oh, she's just so cute. And she is like, I think she's like wild. So she's like a wild, uh, she's going to be a wild teenager when she grows up. I can already see it. She's going to have sass and attitude. She loves this little hair thing on over her hair. She has black hair like her mama. Like, she is her mama's mini-me. And I really feel like that, like, melted Marcus's heart. I feel like if he ever got in a fight with Adeline, he would just head on over to Rosemary's house. Be like, yo, can I crash on your couch? Um, and she loves her mama too, this one. She loves her mama. Like, she's going to go up, and she's going to hug her mama. You can tell. She's, like, such a cutie. She is a mama's girl. Like, I just love her. I love her so, so much. I kind of want, like, another, another, them to hug again, so I can just have, like, a thumbnail pick. Something real, real adorable, y'all. Can y'all just, um, can y'all just hug so I can capture this. I don't know what this interaction is, but y'all need to hug. Oh, is she leaving? Hug lovingly. Yes, follow the child. Oh, I can't seem to get a good picture. Okay, I might get a picture of like Adeline after or something. I really wanted a picture of these two just hugging lovingly. But I don't think I'm going to be able to capture the, the moment. Oh, uh, but she loves her mama. Look at her. She is a hug monster. Like, that is her latest thing. Like, she just wants to hug everybody. Um, her potty training has not been very, very great. Um, she's over here playing the little xylophone. She's like, look at me. I'm a star. I am the star of my show with my stinky diaper. Um, she might do some rock -a stack rosemary went upstairs um they actually did if you notice this is not the same trailer they moved into a church that was like in disrepair 
right next to the trailer and um rosemary's like okay i'm gonna make this home like she's like i'm gonna set up my stand i'm gonna have like a little painting have some flowers some 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 plants uh so she did indeed move right next door and the only flower she has is a rose that um a rose planted and this rose let me tell you what you guys Marcus gave it to her when he came over to see like the little little baby Maggie. He did give her a rose. A rose that Adeline had given him, which I think makes it even more like seriously Marcus. That's that's what this whole thing reads to me. Now, Rosemary has been streaming to earn extra cash. That is how she was able to afford this beautiful new place it doesn't have like a lot of windows um mainly because it was a church it was a church without a lot of windows like there's the one up here a couple down there uh there's none on that side there's some back here and some over here but there's not like it's not like a very uh that doesn't have a lot of windows um she did get some new uh furniture to kind of match the style better um but she kept some of her own, own old furniture to like she's got like a couch here um and she kept like a lot of Adel uh, a lot of maggie stuff um and then she still bakes and sells her baked goods and her plants um she doesn't have any money currently so like that needs to go in the fridge. That, that needs to go in the fridge. Because we are really, really, really broke. Is what we are. Um, she might actually, like, maybe... Um, she might stream, like, a little Let's Play. Um, maybe she's going to stream Blick Block. I mean, that looks like it'd be a fun Let's Play. Oh, and she's gaining followers. Everyone's like, Rosemary's such a pro. Hey, Rosemary. Hey, everyone. Somebody said, it's not funny. Got to go. Bye, everyone. Where do you live? How much is this game? Oh, she gained some some followers. How do you play so good? You're really smart, Rosemary. Can you say my name? Uh, oh, my goodness. The chat comments are what makes this so great. And she got, like, $15. Like, yo. Thank you. I needed that $15. Like, that's going to buy Rosemary's daily coffee. Um, she's gonna come in here and tuck her baby in. Like, this place took all her funds. It is still considered, like, a teeny house. Like, it's, like, a small house. Um, it is, like, a two-bedroom. Two I mean, I guess this... I don't know if that... I felt like this made sense as a living room because, like, it's very small. And I just put the kitchen in the hallway. Like, you know, it, it's very... It's a tight space. Um, but Adeline has a big bedroom, and there's, like, a little bedroom up here. I think she can sleep in it. I know she can woohoo in it because she woohooed with Marcus. Like, I left very little space. Like, I didn't even put any nightstands. Um, so I uh, definitely definitely had to make it work. Um, let me know what you think of my, my build. I thought it was good. I'll upload it to the gallery if you guys want it. It really did give me church vibes. Like, I wish I could have put more windows. But, like, y'all, it was just a struggle to build this place, let alone go place in windows. Um, so, like, I feel like overall, like, I did, I did good. I do think I want to take that back a little. Oh, no, that looks weird. That, that looks weird. Never mind. That can just go out a little. Um, but yeah, I just, I love this build. It really does feel like a church to me, like an old church that's now a home. Um, and she really, like, put her touch to it. Um, so yeah, let me, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of Marcus and his whole, his whole mess. Marcus is a whole mess. Rosemary deserves to find somebody better who is interested in just her, but she's young She's, she's not really thinking with every, you know, with her brain. She's not thinking with her brain. She's thinking with her hormones. She's thinking with, I don't know what, but not her brain. Um, so, <laughs> I, I do love Rosemary, though. Like, I do think she's smart. She's cool. 
I do like that she bought her own house. She did try to ignore Marcus, but then, you know, he came over and he's the one who restarted that little um, affair. So just let me know what you think and I will see you guys all tomorrow. Bye.